Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ty, it's really good to see you. And I know we all say it's good to see you, but I truly mean it. It is good to see you. And I think you do one heck of a job. Uh, one, of the, one of the questions I've had over the years, and you and I have talked about it before, because it's actually a combination Department of Energy and Trade, and it comes down to a product called Grain Orient Electric Steel, the sole producer, by the way, and it is in my best interest because it's made in the town I live in, uh, but it's also in the best interest of America. Uh, as you know, the grain oriented electric steel was the steel that's used inside the transformers of, that push the, steel, push the electric current from one section to another and, and control it. But Mexico has gone to the process now of importing steel from someplace else in the world, grain oriented electric steel. They take the coil, they slit it in Mexico, and they send it to the United States. They say, well, no, no, no. It, it, it's a... It's an American product because it's actually assembled in the United States. But we see so much of that in the business I'm in. Uh, if you were to look to uh, the, the lower right side of any sticker on a car, it tells you exactly where everything comes from that is made in the production of that vehicle. But in this case, this grain or electric steel, uh, and again, Department of Energy making a decision that somehow we should abandon that and go to something called amorphous. Uh, we have one producer of grain or electric steel in America. Uh, we have one very small producer of amorphous steel uh, in America, and the rest would have to be coming from outside to come into America. And I, I think that the concern is that while we know this is going on, why do we continue to let it go on? Uh, there's great opportunities, there's great production uh, capabilities in America. Why would we would ever be just kind of turning a blind eye to our neighbor to the south to go ahead and bring this steel in, slit it, and then send it to us, is to me is beyond anybody's wisdom. I think if we didn't learn anything uh, from the pandemic, it's the, the global supply chain. Uh, what else can we do uh, to alert the rest of, the, of our, not only our country, but let Mexico know? We know what you're doing. You need to stop doing this. They were able to get away from some of the sanctions that the Trump administration were putting in because they would say, oh, no, we're not going to do that. But they've circumvented that. They have done an incredible job of getting around that issue. Just from your perspective and what you've seen, what else can we do? And where is the enforcement if Mexico continues to do what it does? It weakens our supply chain makes it almost uh, non-usable non anymore. Where can we go from there, and how can we get Mexico to actually participate the way they were supposed to participate, and what they asked us, please let us get to this point, and we're, we're gonna be great partners, which, which we really need in this hemisphere. So if you can give me any type of an idea, what else can we do from this point on? I know DOE changed its rule uh, to, to go for, to amorphous steel here in a little bit over a year, and they changed it. They gave a couple more years for us to stay open. But what is it else that we can do? Because it is this product coming in from other places in the world that's hurting us. Mr. Kelly, you know you and I are on the same team with respect to uh, ensuring that our steel producers um, uh, continue to survive and also can thrive in our economy and in the global economy. Really appreciate this question in terms of what we can do. First, let me assure you uh, that we have, uh, coming out of USTR, uh, an extremely intensive and robust uh, work stream with Mexico on the issue of steel, including this product, but more broadly as well. Uh, concerns around um, other parties uh, using Mexico as a way to evade uh, and to circumvent um, our trade programs at the border, and frankly, to uh, water down Mexico's own rights in its uh, legitimate trading relationship with us. So first of all, thank you so much for being such a, a leader and a clear voice on this issue. That helps me, that helps to convey um, the truth in terms of uh, what my team and I have been sharing with our counterparts in Mexico City, that the concerns here are real, they are present, and they are urgent. And I think beyond that, we are really, we are really presenting to the Mexicans um, that it is within their power and their control to do the right thing in collaboration with us to ensure that U.S.-Mexico trade is benefiting um, our industries and not others. Well, listen, I appreciate the help you've given us so far, but I think we have to intensify it. Uh, while we have these important discussions and we talk about what we can do, I'd actually start to see us actually doing something 
that shows them that we're serious about this. We cannot afford, from a national security standpoint, we cannot afford the loss of grain oriented electric steel and our steel transformers. And for those who don't know, watch, watch the telephone poles as you're driving. Any place you see a gray canister, that's the transformer. That's what moves electricity from one point to the next. And it's absolutely critical for our infrastructure. Ambassador, thank you so much. I look forward to working with you on this.